guys, good evening. How are you? I'm sat in my garden waiting for Kevin to come on. So jump on if you've got a question for Kevin. He's going to be here in one minute and we're going to have a good chat. Hi, Nelson. How are you doing? Hi, Kevin. I'm going to go. Hello. Evening. How are you doing? Hey, what's going well, on? I was where you are. <laughs> it's a ghost town over here. Who's got bad connection, me or you? I don't know. Give me. Is it better? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah, it's better. Good. Where in the world are you? I'm in Maryland. You're in Maryland, so it's like one o'clock there, right? Yeah. I'm three hours from New York City. <laughs> and what's the situation like there now? Are you allowed out the house or not? No, no, we're uh, we're completely on lockdown here. You know everything. Lockdown. Lockdown. I could be locked down with you though. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so Everything's for, locked down. For anyone here who's not met Kevin, he's like the king of. Meeting people in person, like, you are so great with your fans. You're amazing. And you're, like, old school. You love to meet everyone in person, don't you? And you've got a little yeah. bit of a thing about social media, maybe, kind of hijacking that. So how are you feeling now that you're stuck in the house and you're having to rely on things like social media? That must be horrible for you. Um, yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a private person, you know, so... But then again, it's good to uh, it's good to stop, you know, have everything just come to a complete stop because I've been so busy, you know, traveling in all these different countries everywhere, you know, around the world for the last four years. So for me, I kind of like uh, I kind of like it. I kind of like, you know, slowing down and having a chance to stop and and let reality catch up, you know. What about training, though? How are you dealing with training from home? It's okay. I mean, for me, um, I wasn't really into the the hardcore, you know, training things or squatting four or five hundred pounds. So I don't need all that weight. You know, for me, it's it's another whole different type of training. It's more uh, calisthenic training, push ups, sit ups, pull ups. You know, these type of things that I think. Uh, which is very, very important. Also, you know, you don't really need to squat 500 pounds or 300 pounds for the guys out there listening all the time. Uh, and you know, all the shows have been so, I think, uh, you know, once in a while you need a break from the hardcore, you know, constantly heavy benching, heavy training, heavy squatting. So this is just a different approach. It's more of a mainstream approach. You know, you see a lot of people on uh, social media doing things from home, exercises in their home gym, outside like you. You know, you're outside, you're running around your property. You know, I see you doing uh, some glute exercises, showing people how to be creative, you know, within your own home environment. And I think this is important, you know, to, uh, to go back to the old school fundamentals, you know, push-ups, sit-ups, running outside. These things is, is what, where, where we you know, what got us started anyway, where we all, you know, came from, so... Yeah, do you um, know what? I think that ironically, actually, this has got a lot more people into fitness for the first time who perhaps didn't have the time to do it before or hadn't considered it. They now yeah. seem to be getting more into fitness, don't they, because of this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see you. I mean, you were involved in, in you know, you did, a, you did a lot, you know, in your chief editor and stuff, you know, for many, many magazines and everything. So, but I see, you know, you're reaching out a lot more to, to your fans and to teach them how to train and everything. And people are really tuning in a lot more now and paying a lot more attention than, you know, before, because everybody was so busy before going in different directions. But now I think this thing is kind of like made everyone stay home, you know, and be creative within their own environment let people in their homes and say, hey, you know what? We're all together in this thing, you know, right now. And 
this is what I'm doing. This is what you can contribute. And we're paying attention now more than ever, you know. So this is something positive that certainly has came out of it. Let me just grab you back to the bodybuilding thing a second because I've got a lot of mm -hmm. questions popping through. We've yeah. been asking you, do you think a push-pull leg split is best? Or, I mean, obviously, that's but what would you generally say? Like, what, What's your favorite training split? When you can get back in the gym. My split, I like uh, I like to do all of my pusher movements one day, you know, chest, shoulders, and triceps, and one workout. Then I'll do, you know, day two would be, you know, legs. Day three would be back and biceps. So I I train my my you know all of my pusher movements separate than the pulling exercises. You know, like I never train back with um, triceps. You know, because the back is a pulling muscle and I try to utilize all of my pulling muscles in that one workout. Because if you do back, you're using your biceps because a bicep is a pulling muscle as well, right? And the whole thing about training is you want to get most blood, all the blood in those areas as possible. So if you're already fatiguing your biceps while you're training back, you might as well go ahead and continue, you know, training them and finish them in that one workout as you're going through back. So I'll do back and biceps. And the same thing with chest. You know, you have to use your shoulders and you have to use your triceps to push, you know, your chest. So I am, would always do chest, shoulders, and triceps because the blood is already in the shoulders. The shoulders are already fatigued. By the time I get to my triceps, they're already fatigued. So it won't take as long as, you know, as, you know, to, 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 to finish breaking them down. And I think uh, this... Uh, push pull concept allowed me to uh, really put on a lot of size in a short period of time to where it would take a lot of guys, you know, maybe like uh, they had to train all year round. And this is one of the secrets that I use to get in shape in, in, in a very, very short period of time. You are in phenomenal shape, like every time I see you. <laughs> I think the last time I saw you actually was at FIBO in Barcelona. Yeah, was, we were at, Dor at Dorian's booth, right? Was it Dorian's booth? Dorian Yates' booth, remember? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it? maybe. With Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He, had, he had short hair back then. Yeah, right? Maybe. I remember. Short, long, in between. Yeah. And I had, um, <laughs> I think you were just doing the cover for Flex Magazine with me. Yeah, that was an awesome cover. I loved your hair on that cover. Yeah, actually, I thank you. I should have pulled it out for this chat, shouldn't I? Yeah. I love that cover. I've got it, actually, in my house. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks a lot. But you always look phenomenal. I mean, how do you do that? Do genetics play a part or is it just because you've consistently trained since you very first started? Well, I, I think I don't overdo things. I think uh, if there's no show for me to prepare for, um, you know, like even when I was training for the Mr. Olympia, I never ate 6,000 or 4,000 calories the whole entire year. You know, I only put this stress on my body for like four months you know really? then the rest of the month okay. yeah then the rest of the months i ate clean but i didn't need four thousand eight hundred calories you know so i would cut my caloric intake in half um i would just do low maintenance training just to maintain you know and not really put all that stress on my body i always liked fish eating a lot of food you know so, uh do any of the unnecessary things to put extra, you know, strain on my body. And I think over a period of time, this kind of like um, slowed the aging process up, you know, for me. Yeah, that's the other thing. Look at 25. I mean, <laughs> come on. Here's all us girls, like, worrying that we can't get to Botox appointments. And Kevin's just sat there getting younger by the day. Would you... ...as well? Go ahead again. Um, you kind of, I didn't hear your question. Did I cut out? I said, would you say that diet plays a huge part in the anti-aging process? Yeah, I think it plays a very, very huge part, yes. Um, unnecessary eating, overeating. You know, if you go back to the Chinese and the historical, you know, things that they say, um, the more, the more mileage you put on your body, the more mileage, right? Like, the more your body has to digest food. So, the Chinese people say the less that you eat, 
the more miles you're going to put on your body. No difference than a car. If you have a new car and you don't put a lot of miles on it, it's going to stay fresh. But if you... That's true, actually. The yeah. Chinese look so young, right? I've never <laughs> they do say that. You know, you only eat what you need to eat and don't overindulge in eating, you know. Oh, a lot I'm of Americans... Go to my dinner then. You've just yeah. Me <laughs> <laughs> I eat to survive what I need to eat. I don't overindulge in eating. I think a lot of Americans... Uh, uh, eat too much. They eat to get full. They don't know when to eat, what time of the day is the best time to eat. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, the metabolism is very, very fast in the morning. We all know that. So you need to eat your fatty stuff in the morning. If you want to cheat and have pizza and all this stuff, eat it before, you know, two or three o'clock because later in the day, your metabolism starts slowing up because it prepares to go to sleep, right? to the bedtime at night but most people want to start eating after six o'clock at night and seven o'clock at night they have these crazy binges uh -huh. and <laughs> this is when your metabolism is at its slowest point so you just sleep in the middle of the night with all this stuff in your in your system and this fat and we all know what happens when carbo carbs aren't burned off it stores the sugar and sugar eventually turns to fat so this is a problem so guys i really recommend and for the girls out there too just eat all your cheat meals or whatever you want to do do that uh before three o'clock in the evening but what about when you do want to put on super size because i mean you've packed on some mass over the years like yeah are you won is it 23 pro titles you've got 23 yes. yeah 23, i mean yes. that's just incredible and always like for me personally you deserve to win the mr olympia more than once and i'm sure thank many you. many people would say that thank and they you. are now and you are um arguably the world's greatest body builder ever to have stepped on stage so mm -hmm. how do you put on that much mass without at times overeating because a lot of people they try like you're their idol they want to look like you yeah. but they just end up getting fat how do you put on bulk without getting fat um well i i think um how do you put on bulk without getting fat number one is you've got to be in a calorie surplus yeah. right yeah i i know exactly what my calories are down to the t and i also know if I'm putting a certain amount of workload on my body over a period of time. So if I'm in the gym training, for me, right? If I'm in the gym training um, six times a day and I'm going through the training regimen like we just said, chest, shoulders, and triceps, you know, legs, back and biceps, then I'll take a day off. But I know how many calories my body is burning and I know how many calories uh, my body needs to heal up. Then I know how much time my body needs to completely heal. So when you have these things calculated, you know, because there's three different body types and everybody is different, um, I've been able to master the process of knowing exactly what my body needs at a specific giving time because of the workload that I put on it. So if you go to the gym and, you know, you don't really um, train to the max, then that day, uh, probably won't need 4,800 calories. But if I go to the gym and I train to the max that day, I'm going to need 4,800 4, calories, uh, 300 grams of protein, 250-some grams of carbohydrates. 20% of my diet is going to be clean fat. And I also know that I'm probably going to need 10 hours of sleep, right, for the next 24 hours for my body to completely heal. So it's down to like a science to where, you know, at that level, where we compete at that level, it really, there's no guessing. It's down to a science. And, and I always say, you know, for someone is it's great to have um, a coach or someone to do your nutrition, but while they're doing it for you, understand the process of becoming, because once you understand the process and you understand how your body works, there's nothing more powerful than, than, you know, being a complete dominator of and controlling your destiny. So I've been able to like master that over a period of time. And I think this is why I can accomplish uh, so much over a short, shorter period of time to where it would take someone a year to do it, you know? 
So now <laughs> that you've accomplished all of that <laughs> and mastered it and you're still looking doing with yourself now now that you're not competing anymore tell us all about your business because last time i spoke to you you were in poland yeah we have of course i have i have one here the liver of your signature series uh my supplement nutritional line and i think you saw it at the fibo when you were there you know we're in like 80 different countries around the world um by the grace of god you know through this industry um which I've been blessed with. Uh, it's given us the platform, not only me, but people like you and other professionals in our industry to uh, utilize, make a profession out of the thing we love doing, right? So my goal was to create a nutritionist supplement line that would somewhat mimic my career. When I say mimic my career, that means a straightforward, uh, no proprietary blend, straightforward, no nonsense nutritional line. And I think that um, my team and I, we, we, we pretty much accomplished that. Uh, we started uh, five years ago. Our anniversary was February the 15th for five years. And thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's been great. So all of my time and my my dreams and my thoughts and my creativity is going into a nutritional supplement line, developing supplements, you know, starting with the proteins, uh, with the body needs, um, you know, the BCAAs, the branch chain amino acids. And every single year, you know, we started off with the silver line, the Livroni Silver. Um, we ran that for a while. Then we went to the Livroni uh, Black line, you know, uh, which we designed that for a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, Middle Eastern customers. Every year we try to come out with something different, like Mercedes-Benz would uh, come up with a new model, you know, or a BMW or a Ferrari, whatever. You always have to, you know, continue to move forward because there's always some raw materials and things are constantly changing. You have to stay up with the times. So last year we came out with the Livroni Unique line. This year we've added to, um, we've added to, you know, to, to the line, the, um, the Livroni Gold, which is, uh, we're launching right now within the next, uh, 30 days. So each and every year we try to add something stay ahead of the game, introduce something to the market that hasn't never been done before, and also stay fresh, you know. So I really enjoy doing it because I, I, I enjoy giving back, and I I visit the countries. I visit all my distributors around the world, you know. I've been to 68 different countries in the last two years, and when I go there, it's not just about the supplements. It's about implementing a structure within um, their community to help them evolve and to help them be better students in school, be better doctors, the police force, the military force. I work with all these, um, all, all types of individuals to, to help them in, implement a structure within, you know, their community so that they can accomplish their goals and be a bit more sharper and uh, have a little more confidence within themselves. Because we know that nutrition, right? Without the proper nutrition, you can't think right. You're not going to have the, the energy. You know, you're not going to feel like doing anything. You're not going to feel like, you know, <laughs> in full control and be creative, whatever it is you want to do with your life. So um, this is where I'm at right now, you know. And, um, so I, whilst I, I we're really all on lockdown, it. keep on top of the nutrition and you're going to keep reaching out to all of your fans and all of your distributors and just keep in there. And then as soon as you can get back out there you'll be traveling right away again i guess yeah yeah hopefully you know because you know with this um with the uh thing going on now i just hope this pandemic ends soon you know so that we can get back to normal normal you know way of living you know once again and i hope this doesn't seclude us too much more further you know me too are you all right to answer a couple of questions before yeah you go? sure let's do it guys let's do if you've got a question for kevin fire it across now 10 seconds because <laughs> i i know that so many questions have been coming through and we've been chatting so i yeah. haven't been answering everyone for you and i feel bad about that it's okay. um yeah kevin you're getting so okay day off i think i've a challenge yeah. for genetics for bodybuilding poor genetics right you know because you know with this um 
with the uh, thing going on now, I just hope this pandemic ends soon, you know, so that we can get back to normal, normal, you know, way of living, you know, once again. And I hope this doesn't seclude us too much more further, you know. Me too. Are you all right to answer a couple of questions before? Yeah, you go? sure. Let's do it. Guys, Let's do if it. you've got a question for Kevin, fire it across now. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I know that so many questions have been coming through and we've been chatting. So I yeah. haven't been answering everyone for you and I feel bad about that. It's okay. Um, yeah, Kevin, you're getting so... Okay, I see your hair growing in, man. Yeah. But you have hair. Keeping yourself, brother. <laughs> God bless you. Questions, guys. The best shoulders. Someone said you're a king of triceps. What is your favourite body part? Whilst we're waiting for the question. Favourite body part? Um, I really don't have one. What really motivates you, someone said? What motivates me is a challenge. A challenge. A challenge. You know, yeah. I've always been motivated by So what's someone. your next challenge? Oh, gosh. I'm missing so many questions now. <laughs> Have you thought about writing, someone said? I didn't see well, what they wanted you to write. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, who's the best coach in the industry? The best coach, um, and there's many different coaches, you know. I can I can think of tons of guys out there that are very, very helpful. So I think that all comes down to the opin opinion, you know, of an individual. It's just like saying, what's the best car manufacturer, you know? Well, there's many of them. I like Ferraris, I like BMWs, I like Mercedes, I like, you know, so it comes down. Yeah. Okay, cool. Someone said, when are you coming back to Reading? Um, Reading, well, as soon as I can travel again, you know, I'll be what there. What are your top three Bible verses? <laughs> Kevin, show your biceps. <laughs> oh, gosh, they're all coming at me. How should someone train and eat if they have below <laughs> genetics for bodybuilding? What was that question again? How should someone train and eat if they have below genetics for bodybuilding? Poor genetics, well, I guess. I know, right? Well, first of all, the diet. We want to start with the diet. And uh, the mindset. Where the mind diet goes, the body mindset. follows. Whilst we're on diet and mindset, so have you here all night? Someone else said, would you recommend going vegan for bodybuilding? For bodybuilding, um, I don't know. But I tell you what, I could tell you one thing. I'm going to try it out this week. I've decided to uh, Are you? How many vegan. days yeah. are you going to do? I'm going to do as long as, as long as I can until I... They say after like the first week or first three days, you'll you'll notice a difference. And I, I want to try it out. So if I try it out and um, I feel really good, then I'm going to stick with it. OK, let me know how you get on, actually. I'm interested. Do you know what? I might do it with you. Well, yeah. Right. Should we do it because together? OK. You should I'm do it. Yeah. When are we starting? I'm going to start mine on Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday it is. All yeah. right, one more question, then I'll let you go. Before okay. lifting, were you a skinny guy, someone said? Yes, I was. I was I was a, a hard gainer. Had a super fast metabolism, which I still do. And um, I had to have my carbohydrates really, really high. So, yes. Uh, but I was young. You know, when you're young, I think uh, you, you do have a super fast metabolism. So, um, yeah. But we've been there. You still look 21. So, uh, one last question. Yes. Off, what's your favorite cheat meal, someone said? Pizza. Me too. So yeah, I have to say non vegan pizza. pizza at the end of our vegan. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, thank you so much, my darling. Okay, thank you. Continued good luck with all thank of you. your brand stuff. And um, I'll yeah. see you somewhere. Soon, Thanks, I Crazy guess. Ball. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Cheers. Bye. Lots bye bye. Of love. Bye. Yep. Bye bye.